Hey, Pastor Cooley here again. Just something I've been thinking about here is I hear a lot of backlash from people who don't like the gospel, don't like to see people be saved and changed by the grace of God. Everybody today in America wants to be saved, but they want to be saved from hell. They want to be saved from the judgment of God, from the just reward for their sin. They want to be saved from that. But they don't want to be saved from their sin. They don't want to be saved from their unrighteousness. They don't want to be saved to walk in newness of life. Um, one thing I've noticed, and I hear a lot of accusations, that if you have a changed life, if the Lord Jesus Christ has saved you and changed your life, what happens is people that are religious, and some that are even saved, they don't like it when you get saved more than what they appear to be saved. Now, I know that's kind of stupid because really when you get saved, you get saved. Amen. But the point is, is that when your salvation changes your life, that's when a lot of religious people get upset. That's when a lot of religious people don't like it. If you, if your life and your family members don't like it, if you get saved and it changes your life, it impacts your life, they don't want you to get that saved. Oh, I wanted you to be saved from hell. I didn't want you to be saved from your sin so it changes your life and it makes you a new creature and then your life is going to rebuke and reprove my life just by the fact that you live for God. Because see, that's what happens a lot with people. Once you get saved and God changes your life, which is true salvation, by the way, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When you get changed, when Jesus regenerates you and makes you a new creature, that upsets some people. People don't like that. Why? Because your life is different now and because you don't watch the same wicked movies, because you don't go to the same wicked places, because you don't do the same wicked things, you're a constant reminder of what they're supposed to be doing for God and that they're not doing for God. So they're going to get mad at you and they're going to call you, man, they'll call you a cult. Your family members will say, oh, you must be in a cult. You must be in a cult. You must be in so Why are you following that cult or that, that cultic preaching and all those other things? What's cult? Listen, first of all, when people say that about holidays and everything else, well, show me Christmas in the Bible. It's not in there. Show me any of these things in the Bible. It's not. They're not in there. Christmas isn't in the Bible. Celebrating Christmas isn't in the Bible. Celebrating these extra biblical holidays isn't in the Bible. But people get mad at you and say, oh, you must be a cult because the Jehovah's Witnesses, they, they, don't work, they don't celebrate Christmas either. Well, even a blind squirrel finds a nut. All right? So that has nothing to do with the truth of it. But what happens is people, they get upset with you. They don't like the fact, they don't like the fact that you, your life changes. You're different. They don't like that. They don't like the fact that you get, that, that God gets sin out of your life, that God takes the sin out of your life and changes you. They don't like that. So they get upset. And you know what else happens? If it's your parents and it's people that, that and grandparents and people like that, they get very convicted. And why do they get convicted? They get convicted because they didn't raise you right. That's why. They see how you raise your children according to the scriptures, and they get upset with you because you raise your children right for the Lord, or you're trying to. And we all fail, and we all have to try to do hard, do better, and have to walk in the Spirit and get the power of God in our lives. But you know what happens? What happens is they get upset with you because you want to live for God. They get upset with you because they didn't raise you right. Your parents didn't in a lot of ways. They didn't raise you according to the scriptures. What I find is funny is that the sibling that is living for God and trying to follow in holiness and righteousness and separation, and they got that saved... That relative is the one that gets picked on. But the other, the other siblings that aren't living for God, that are living in the world, that are, that are living in a compromised, fake, phony religion, that people that live under a false profession of faith, those people, are all, those children are always treated great. Why? Because their life isn't a constant reminder of the others not living for God. 
But when you live for God, your life is a reminder to those that aren't living for God. Okay? And that's what happens. So when you live for God, when you try to follow the scriptures, your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, they're convicted by your life. If somebody lives in a mediocre Christian life, if they live that way, then no, they're not. their life isn't going to bother them. But salt rubs in, right? Salt stings a little bit sometimes and when you are the salt of the earth it stings and it reminds your parents hey my parents go to church here they go to old Paz baptist church okay so they have to hear a lot of things that they didn't raise me in and it's got to be hard for them to hear it sometimes but they still have to hear the truth they have to know and you know what they do they receive it and they say you know what you're right we didn't raise you right we didn't raise you we didn't do these things right listen the important thing is, is you know what you could sit and look at the past and you can blame everything about the past. You can sit there and you can live in the in the land of defeat. Or you can move on and as a grandparent, as a parent, you can say, Hey, praise the Lord, my son, my daughter. They're living for God. They're 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 following the scriptures. They're getting sin out of their life. They're getting Disney out of their life. They're getting wicked movies out of their life. They're getting wicked rock music out of their life. They're not celebrating Halloween and all those wicked things. You could actually be a real Christian and say, Praise the Lord. Or you could fight them and not worry about your other siblings that are living in, your other children that are living in sin and wickedness. That's what I've seen. Other children, oh, they're doing fine. Well, they're living in sin. They're living in sin. Yeah, but that's okay because that doesn't convict me. So they can live in sin. See what I mean? The person that lives godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Jesus Christ said he came not to send peace but a sword. So the next time your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or aunts or uncles or cousins or whoever your family is, they get upset, just remember what Jesus said. He said they would be upset with you. And just remember, they're upset for righteousness' sake because you want to separate from sin and live godly. And that's a constant reminder of what they're not doing because they're going to keep watching their wicked movies. They're going to keep watching their wicked magic Disney movies with sorcery and witchcraft in them. They're going to keep uh, listening to rock music. They're going to keep going on with pop culture Christianity. They're going to keep doing that. They're not going to stop. So, that, But you're a constant reminder of what they're not doing. And you're going to raise your kids for the Lord. What I'm amazed at is I see a lot of families that didn't raise their kids for the Lord that grew up in churches, but they didn't they didn't go the they didn't follow the Lord all the way. They didn't give their whole heart to the Lord. And they raised some kids that live wickedly. They're 30, 40 years old now, they have children and they live wickedly. Or they don't have children and they live wickedly. But you who have children and are raising them for God, you're the bad people. Oh, there's something wrong with you. You're weird. You need to get away from that cult. Don't listen to that preaching. Instead of dealing with substance and proving that the preaching's wrong, which they can't do, what do they do? They just bash you and lay charges against you. That's what they're going to do. So just be prepared for that. That's going to happen. All that live, live godly in Christ Jesus sh shall suffer persecution. Tell them to open up the Bible and prove it from the scriptures. If they can't, they need to shut their mouth. That's just the truth of it. I don't care if it's mom, dad, uncle, grandma, grandpa, great grandma, great grandpa, the Pope in Rome. I don't care who it is. It doesn't matter. We all have to follow the authority of scripture. If they can't show you in the Bible, they need to shut up then. Or they need to repent and get right with God, and then they'll like the Bible preaching. They'll want to live for God then, once they get right with God. Anyway.